Hello, everybody. It's Yoli Medina. Today, I'm going to talk about um, the Koberger case and the uh, motion to unseal the motion to suppress the investigative genetic genealogy material used to assist in the identification of Koberger, of Brian Koberger, the defendant. So in this case, there was a knife sheath that was found at the second inspection of the crime scene. It was found underneath one of the victims, Maddie Mogan, and it was a K-bar knife sheath, and they found DNA, a single source male DNA, on the button of the knife sheath. And they used that DNA to put it in, they put it into CODIS, uh, which is the national database to see if there was a match, uh, and there wasn't. And CODIS is the database where criminals have to give their, their DNA so it gets put in the national database. And so it didn't match. There was nobody in CODIS that matched that single source male DNA that was on the button snap of the K-bar knife sheet. So they went to um, investigative genetic genealogy. And at one time, I knew all the steps that had to go in to doing it. Um, and there are a lot of steps involved. Uh, but I won't go into that because I'm not an expert and I don't remember exactly what all the steps were. But first, there's an STR profile, a single tandem repetitive DNA strand that, that is made. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, anyway, and that's what's put into CODIS. So then there are procedures after that, when they didn't find his DNA in CODIS, they went through certain procedures and the DNA first went to the Authram, it was called Authram Labs. Uh, and at that time, Authram Labs was not accredited. I don't know what that means exactly, but people have made a point of saying they weren't accredited to do this type of work. I don't know if that means anything. Uh, in any event, uh, law enforcement has used that lab before. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect this case. And so, but before Authram labs could complete their the project of finding out who whose dna this was uh related to as far as familial dna with a tree of you know genetic tree of relatives the fbi took over and um sorry i have a runny nose it's been very windy here that's why i have my bug eye glasses <laughs> Um, so, so the FBI took over and they completed it and they found that the DNA matched some, somebody of someone in Koberger's family. And so I'm going to save you the whole story and just say that the FBI went and got the trash from his uh, Koberger's family home in Pennsylvania, because that's where he went during the winter break. And they matched the DNA that was on the knife sheath to uh, Brian Koberger's father. And then there is a big, huge number of a percentage that the person who left the D or the person mm -hmm. whose DNA was on the button snap of the knife sheath was a high percentage to be the son of Mr. Koberger Sr. So I don't know why they went to those lengths, but that's for a different, different video. I think I even made a video about it. I'm not sure at this point, but uh, so, so anyway, so the defense has filed a motion to unseal a motion to suppress the IgG uh, material that was used to assist in identifying Brian Koberger. Now, first, they, the defense and the prosecution stipulated to seal it. And then now 
the defense wants to unseal it. And this is not new. I mean, when the defense was trying to get this information from the prosecution, there was a motion to compel. There was two. And uh, the first one was uh, partially open to the public, the hearing. And the second one was sealed entirely. So the prosecution turned over the information that the judge said needed to be turned over. It wasn't all of it, but it was whatever the judge ordered to be turned over. And we don't know what that is because it was sealed. And so this material was sent, was uh, turned over to the defense. I have no idea how it was turned over or how you even turn over DNA if it's on a, I, I don't know. But anyway, that material was turned over to the defense. And it wasn't all of it. It was only what the judge allowed. So now... Uh, the defense wants to suppress that material, the IgG material, investigative genetic genealogy material that was used uh, to help identify Brian Koberger. And the basis for that is they say that law enforcement used a database, they illegally basically, they, they didn't have the right to use a database that involved people who donate their genetics or their genetic material, like through Ancestry.com or 23andMe, and they don't opt out of the process of using the DNA for law enforcement purposes. And what I mean by that is that when you send your DNA, like, for example, 23andMe, and I did it, I did it. And I learned through one of the defense experts at the motion to compel, that was Ms. Vargas, uh, who said that you have to opt out of, opt out from law enforcement being able to use your DNA to assist them in solving crimes. I didn't know that. And she went through the process and she said, yeah, you got to go to this menu, this menu, and this menu, and then you go and you opt out. I followed the directions and I opted out. <laughs> I didn't know that I was opted in to begin with. Um, so there are some issues with regard to using certain databases uh, to assist in getting a match of a family member, of a possible family member, um, to identify the potential suspect. So... With that said, I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, I'm gonna go over the motion. It's not a very long motion. It's a motion to unseal the motion to suppress the IgG material. So let me do that. Okay, here we go. Defendant's motion to, ice, to unseal the IgG suppression briefing and hearing. All right. So if we go down, okay. So the history, and I'm just gonna read this highlighted portion. It says, Mr. Kohlberger filed his first motion to compel IgG discovery on June 22nd, 2023. The hearing on that matter was public and involved the testimony of several expert witnesses. The court ordered the production of records in camera and under seal. Mr. Koberger filed a second motion to compel IgG discovery on April 15, 2024. Over the objection of Mr. Koberger, the court required that portion of the May 30th, 2024 hearing on the second motion to compel IgG discovery be closed. The court again ordered the production of records under seal. The court's concerns were the privacy rights of the names of the individuals identified in Mr. Koberger's family. And the, the paragraph refers to um, footnote two and footnote three. So footnote two is the defendant's third motion to compel discovery and footnote three is the defendant's fifth motion to compel discovery. So this was after stipulating that it would be filed under seal. Okay. Now, the argument 
is due to national and international attention to this case and in the interest of protecting Mr. Koberger's right to a fair trial, many pleadings in this case have been sealed appropri appropriately pursuant to Idaho Administrative Rule 32. Well, it's not just pleadings, it's discovery and what's produced in discovery that has been filed under seal. So assuming pleadings means discovery, then I guess this is accurate, but in my jurisdiction, it would not be, it would have to say many pleadings and discovery materials in this case have been sealed appropriately, but I don't know what Idaho rules are. Then it says, uh, uh, Mr. Koberger has a right to a public trial and sealing a suppression hearing is a clear violation of this right to a public trial. Well, if he has a right to a public trial, uh, then everything should be public in my point of view. But as I said, there's probably good reason, as I said in my, one of my past videos, there's probably good reason why things are under seal, certain things. And they cite to a, a U.S. Supreme Court case, Weaver v. Massachusetts, 582 U.S. 286. And another uh, Supreme Court case, Waller v. Georgia, 467 U.S. 39. And this, the first case was in 2017, second case in 1984, where it says sealing of motion to suppress to protect privacy of witnesses was error requiring remand for new for new public hearing so it appears there's u.s supreme court law that says that sealing the motion to suppress to protect the privacy of witnesses was error so it seems they have some support that the protection of the privacy of witnesses is not something that you can use to seal a motion to suppress. However, in this case, it's not necessarily a witness. It's somebody who don't who don't who gave their genetic material to a third party database. And being that it's very misleading because if you're not informed, uh, you could be opt in for law enforcement to use your DNA to solve crimes. Some people may want to opt into that. Some people may not. And so without knowing what's going on and what database they access and whose family member had donated, you know, the DNA, it's very hard to to understand what's going on, like the rest of this case. Some of it is sealed, most of it is sealed, and then now they want they want this motion to suppress the IgG information to be unsealed. And let me see if there's the argument is that the the public should know about this issue with regard to the IgG suppression motion. And it's an issue of public concern. And it's the First Amendment right of people to know what's going on in trials. And that that's, that's the defense's argument. Now, I don't know how the judge is going to rule because the judge set a hearing for tomorrow. Today's the 20th. Tomorrow's the 21st. The judge set a hearing for tomorrow, the 21st, and it's a closed hearing to determine whether the motion to suppress the IgG material used in this case should be public and there should be a public hearing. So that's going to happen on the 21st, but we won't be able to see how that hearing is conducted or what is said because it's sealed. So we'll prob the, probably get an order from the court uh, telling us whether that motion is going to be unsealed and open to the public or whether it's going to be closed. And that's the best way that I can describe this, this whole deal. But the, the, the point that well, the, not the point, but the, the issue that bothers me is that 
they stipulated to file it under seal. And if there was an issue, instead of stipulating it and filing it under seal, why didn't why didn't it wasn't it taken up before? Meaning the parties aren't going to stipulate to file it under seal, meaning if the, the the defense doesn't want it under seal, if the prosecution wants it under seal, then request a hearing rather than filing it under seal and then now having to file another motion to unseal it. So it just seems cumbersome. And maybe that's the best way to do it. I don't know, but it just seems very cumbersome. And if I were the judge, I would be very frustrated because why did you stipulate to file an under seal then? He signed an order, you know? The judge signed an order to, to file all these motions to suppress under seal. So now he's gonna have to look at the case again, have a hearing, I mean, look at the issue again, have a hearing and decide whether it's, it's gonna be unsealed. So these, these proceedings are very cumbersome and I, I'm anxious to know what the, what the outcome is, but we won't know until the judge issues his order. So that's all I have to say about this uh, motion to unseal the motion to suppress the IgG material. And I said I was gonna do a video and I'm always late to the game because I do have a day job but I said I was going to do the video, so I did it. And I hope you all understand what I was saying. Um, but in any event, we're, we're waiting now for the hearing to take place, which is the 21st, which is tomorrow. And then we'll get an order and we'll see what the judge decides. So that's the best I could do with all of this information. Uh, thanks. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys on the next video.